All right, guys, so let's look at solution number five. So we already did solution four, which was a weak acid combined with a strong base. For solution five, now let's mix a weak base with a strong acid. Now, as a weak base, I picked NH3. As a strong acid, I picked HCl. So again, we're going to do the same things we did before. I have a beaker that just contains water. What happens if I have a beaker that just contains water, and I take some weak acid, and I toss it inside of the water? What happens when a weak base comes in contact with water? They react with one another, of course. So you have the weak base reacting with water, and that's going to give you right here the conjugate acid, the conjugate acid, and you get your hydroxide ion in this case. Now we know that this is a reaction that's eventually going to go to equilibrium. And how do I denote equilibrium? I draw my scale out. And the scale, that's what the scale that I have down here and I have. And just draw these little dots right there just to denote equilibrium. And to repeat what I've mentioned before, these dots do not mean the amount of product. Those dots are there just to show that this reaction is at equilibrium. So we have that solution so far. So what happens when we toss in a strong acid, something like HCl inside of the solution? Now we know that HCl is a strong acid, and we know that strong acids, when you throw them inside of water, completely dissociate. So if I look at HCl in water, we know we're going to form Cl- and H3O+. Now notice how the product of this reaction is producing OH-, and the product of this reaction is producing H3O+. And notice, that's very important, because now you have a solution in which OH- and H3O+, are present together. Now remember, the same exact thing is going, the same thing that happened here is going to happen here. The OH- is going to react with the H3O+. OH- reacts with H3O+, and that's going to go over and produce H2O, two H2O molecules. And again, notice what's happening here. Look at this bottom reaction again. What is this reaction telling you? This reaction is telling me that I'm consuming the same thing it's telling me here. I'm consuming OH- and I'm consuming H3O+. So if I look at this particular, if I look at these two reactions, I can say that the concentration of H3O+, is dropping and that the concentration of OH- minus the hydroxide ion, is also dropping. If I know that the concentration of OH- minus is dropping because it's being consumed in this bottom reaction over here, what does my scale look like now? So if I redraw my scale, reactants, products, notice how my scale is now off balanced. Now that the concentration of OH- minus is, has been thrown off, it's decreased, the scale is no longer balanced, and this reaction is no longer at equilibrium. So if we ask ourselves the question, how does this reaction, or how does this, where does this reaction have to shift in order to go back to equilibrium, we would say that this reaction has to go in the forward direction. So this one reaction has to go in the forward direction the same way that this other reaction also had to go in the forward direction. So again, guys, that's just what I, what I want you guys to really understand from all of these solutions that I've done so far is which way does a reaction shift? Is it going to go in the forward direction? Is it going to go in the reverse direction? And pay particular attention to these, these last two solutions that I did, solution four and solution five, because what they're showing you is that whenever a hydroxide ion is present with a hydronium ion, hydroxide and hydronium are present in the same solution, they're always going to react with one another and you're always going to produce water molecules. And again, just to summarize one last time, the whole purpose of 17.1, which is of course leading you into 17.2, is to show you how reactions shift when you have multiple components present inside of a solution. And again, when you guys are going into session 17.2, buffer solutions, pay attention to these two solutions here. What happens when you have a weak acid and you add a strong base? What happens when you have a weak base and you add a strong acid? Which way is the reaction shifting?